Good afternoon. Now, we're about, we're about three weeks away from uh, Labor Day in September, and then we're going into fall. So, I got ready, and I got two gallons of premium blue, 15 weight 40, and currently I have SAE 20 weight 50 in there, which I put in in April, which is a pretty thick stuff. Uh, last year, I had put in, after I put the new chain and the tensioner in, I have, I have put in Pence Oil 20 weight 40, which was still regular oil, so non-synthetic. And Pence Oil discontinued all of their non-synthetic oil. And this is now the first time I have a synthetic oil in there with 20 weight 50 because they don't have the synthetic oil and 20 weight 40, which I prefer for the summer for the V8 cars. Now, with this being said, this is pretty heavy. If you saw my video uh, about three, four months ago on my oil change, I showed you the startup procedure with this kind of heavy viscosity in there of how you start the car up so you prime the oil system before you actually, uh, you know, get the car to start because that takes about 20 seconds or better to build up oil pressure. Because of Pence Oil discontinuing the 20 weight 40 as a non-synthetic oil, which I had in my car from July of last year until this April, so through the entire winter with no issues, no uh, sounds coming from the camshafts or you know associated parts. They usually have a slight knock, knock, knock noise until your oil flow starts for a few seconds, especially when it is cold. Um, this stuff here will do this as soon as the temperature goes right below, I would say 65 degrees Fahrenheit. 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I can hear a knock for two, three, four seconds, and then it starts to run. But I would not run this much lower temperatures than 70 degrees. So that's why we're going to change this in probably the middle of September. I got the premium blue because this is now one of the few ones you can get at 15 weight 40. And you have the choice between Valvoline Premium Blue or Shell Rotella uh, T6, T06 or T6. The issues associated with the diesel or heavy diesel, heavy engine oils is usually they will point you out, they call it a one solution formula. And the first one is the primary application that is diesel, second is gas, and then natural gas. There is diesel oil out there, which has an extremely high phosphorus content. And this has been a source for debate since 1977 on how much phosphorus um, in engine oil a catalytic converter can hold up to. And I read up at all the different AES uh, and SAE, you know, SAE and other studies on this stuff. And it turns out that the maximum you want or what they agreed on is 0.12% or uh, what is it, 1250 ppm parts per million. This stuff here has 1157 ppm. So this is on the upper limit. Um, the SAE, SAE people prefer 800 ppm maximum for catalytic converters. But this is only available in the lower viscosities, like 5 weight 30, uh, 0 weight 30, 0 weight 20. This this real thin stuff for the new vehicles, which is not suitable for the older vehicles, and especially not for the V8s. The V8s, the reason why we put this heavy-duty engine oil, this stuff here, or this stuff in here, is because of the chain tensioner. The chain tensioner is a oil-driven system, 
And the oil is extremely important. The viscosity of the oil is important to build up the pressure the chain tensioner has to develop to hold the chain in place. The rule of thumb is as thicker the stuff is at any temperature, is better the chain tensioner will perform as long as your chain is going to last, is less wear you have, and is less likely you're going to experience problems with uh, slack going in and out of the chain, which will cause a rough running engine, as to just put it that way. Now, my catalytic converter, I do not know if this is the first one or second one, has no back pressure in it. That means it is clear because I checked that with a pressure test. And um, this stuff here is synthetic oil being an engine oil for cars is under the 800 or right at that core border of 800 ppm. So I'm going effectively up by 0.03% uh, between this year and this year. So this is not a lot. The other thing is with the phosphorus uh, causing damage to the catalytic converter, which they found out in various tests they did, is that that is mostly happening at full speed. That means at the full RPM. In, in this case, you're looking at 5,000, you know, plus RPM uh, when you're going barreling down the highway at full speed, which you can do here anyway in the United States. That's when this becomes mostly of an issue on how high of a concentration you have. At speeds of 60 to 80 miles an hour, this is basically negligible. And I went with Valvoline Premium Blue, uh, for one is, uh, Pierre had, you know, posted that not too long ago on his channel, that he prefers this here. And this will work as good as the Shell Rotella T6 uh, in the same weight. The except was that I got this here on sale at Napa for $16 a gallon with free shipping. So the whole change, two gallons of the stuff, Came out to $32, and then it added, uh, what, $3 in tax or something like this to it. So I got, you know, 35 bucks, 36 bucks in those. And I could have not gotten them in the stores because our stores sell them here between $19 to $24 per gallon, even over at Walmart. And this is heavy enough. I prefer 20 weight for 40 over 15 weight, this is already a little bit thin. Um, you know, for the um, chain tensioner, but this is the only thing I can get. There's only motorcycle uh, oil available now in 20 weight 40. And I didn't want to put necessarily motorcycle oil, which runs at much higher RPMs, um, you know, into the engine. So I went with the Valvoline Premium Blue. Um, I will see. To get this stuff here out, I actually have to open up the oil drain. I cannot use my extractor because even when the engine is hot, this stuff is pretty thick. And uh, this has to be done when the engine is at full operating temperature. I have to drive for a while to get this liquid enough to get all of the stuff out. And then we're going to change this over for the winter. Uh, until spring of next year with this here. And then I have to make a decision probably by April of next year if I'm just going to do a regular oil change and leave this in here. Or we will see this and how this is going to perform then in the last two weeks of September when it still gets warm, but probably not as hot as what we got. Our Kansas temperatures, the summers are usually very hot. Because we're kind of flat here, we have no mountains to the north or south of us. So we're getting the warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico up here, which can push us easily into the 100 to 110 degree range, which is around 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. And in the winter, we can easily drop down to minus 10 degrees Celsius, minus 25 degrees Celsius which is about zero degrees minus five degrees Fahrenheit because the cold Arctic wind from Canada and the Arctic Circle blows then 
from the northerly direction straight into our region here. So hot, summers are hot, very hot here. Winters are very, very cold. So we usually change the oil twice a year. In the beginning, you know, from in late spring, early spring, middle spring, somewhere around there. And then in the beginning of fall, like after Labor Day for winter. So you have a summer oil for hot, very hot temperatures. And then you have to get something which can cope with the very low temperatures. 15 weight uh, doesn't go down all the way to um, uh, below zero degrees Fahrenheit. It, it's right there at uh, minus 10 degrees, which is about Celsius. It's uh, minus uh, plus five degrees, five plus 10 degrees Fahrenheit in that range. If it gets much colder, I'm probably not going to drive it or I'm going to let the engine completely warm up. That's what I did with the 20 weight 40 this winter is I would just start the engine and then warm everything up. You don't want to drive with a 20 weight 40 in, 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 in five degree Fahrenheit weather until the engine has reached complete operating temperature. And that is also better for your transmission. So we will keep you posted. And with that, you have a great Saturday evening.